Dr. Brecken, it's a pleasure to have you on our program. Thank you for taking the time for this conversation with me. Well, thank you. I want us to go back in time to San Francisco's beginning. Why did San Francisco become California's big city during the 19th century? I don't know. Why not Monterey or, or, or Eureka or, let's say, Los Angeles? Oh, it's not just California's big city. It's the biggest city in the West. Wow, the biggest city in the West. Okay, wow. Absolutely. Um, And it's because of its natural advantage. You know, the only other city that can really compare with it, I think, is New York City or maybe New Orleans. They have natural advantages. And San Francisco has the advantage of what was then a 700-square-mile bay, which is um, constricted by its entry, which is the mile-wide Golden Gate, and that opens up via rivers into the Great Central Valley and the Sierra Nevada. So it's an absolutely natural place to put a great city with the ocean on one side and water transportation into an incredibly rich hinterland in the center. As I say, the only other city I can think of really is New York City um, with its access to upstate state New York and ultimately to the Midwest via the Erie Canal um, because of the Hudson River. Yeah, um, that's a big comparison. Oh, San Franciscans have always had a rivalry with New York that New Yorkers are completely unaware of. Um, And, (laughs) you know, but it's it's kind of valid because um, they're physical positions and their access to a hinterland are so similar. So let's fast forward a little bit. Um, Mm -hmm. Let's say it's now 1920, right? We talked about the 19th century. Now it's 1920 past World War I. At this point, what city in the U.S. would San Francisco compare to? Well, that's an interesting date because by 1920, San Francisco has fallen out of the top 10. Prior to that... That's a big drop. Okay. Yeah. uh, Prior to that, um, in the late 19th century, it was comparable to some of the larger cities in the Midwest and in the East, not to New York City or Philadelphia. It's way behind that. But it's in the top 10. And by 1920, it It's falling behind, and I think that's largely because of the catastrophe of 1906, the earthquake and fire, and then also, and the graph trials that came after that, that blackened its eye. Um, But it's also because at that point, Los Angeles is starting to leap ahead of San Francisco as the leading city on the West Coast, largely based on the fact that LA is floating on a sea of hydrocarbons. There's a tremendous pool of oil underneath it, but also because of um, the climate and uh, improved transportation that were drawing millions of people to Southern California at that time. So it leaps ahead as San Francisco starts falling behind. For the record, I live in Southern California now, and I miss the climate in Northern California. I miss the fog, so... But but I guess, you know, what you said proves the point, because I now live in Southern California. Um, culturally speaking, again, going back to 1920, what city would San Francisco compare to? We talked about size and, you know, economics and just, I guess, financial heft. But culturally speaking, is there was there anything special about San Francisco in the 19th century or the early 20th century? Well, it would compare with um, with Chicago, um, which what, what, what time period are you speaking about? Well, in the mid um, the mid twentieth century, early twentieth century, mid twentieth century, because so much money had been made, a lot of it had been plowed into the cultural institutions of San Francisco. It's interesting that San Francisco has always been a theater and um, a performing arts town. Yeah. That, uh, with the exception of photography, in which it's always been in the forefront, um, it hasn't really been a literary or an arts town, which is not to downplay the people who were here that did that. But as far as a world class city, it's performing arts and photography. 
as far as literary was in Steinbeck from the area not the city no, itself Steinbeck is from a Monterey Salinas Valley yeah 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 not not mm -hmm. not the city itself um Mark Twain of course was here during, exactly uh, the gold and silver rush throughout the 19th century and early 20th century was San Francisco's geographical constraint an issue it's on a peninsula you can't expand and it's not like Los Angeles where you can just sprawl on and on right yeah that has always been a problem um and it has resulted in something um that is unique in the west that is it's the only western city that has row houses and that's because the constriction uh surrounded on three sides by water yeah um means that it can't grow except up and so um it's been hampered in its growth it tried to fill in the bay to create more land but it was only partially successful there it, it's interesting it almost immediately wiped out its very reason for being which was Yerba Buena Cove, which is yeah. where the ship came in, and they're underneath the financial district now. But uh, that means that... Oh, wow, way, that's why it's called it Yerba Buena Gardens now. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Yerba Buena was the name of the of the, the original name of the Mexican Pueblo yeah. that San Francisco supplanted. Um, so what happens is when San Francisco suddenly appears with the gold rush, um, it appears in a location which is, well, in in a state, in a region, which was an unplundered treasure chest. And it immediately set about plundering that in order to build itself. For example, the, the, uh, the extraordinary old growth redwood trees, which at that time were around San Francisco Bay. Now there's only a tiny fraction left. The largest and oldest of them were probably in the Oakland Hills, right across San Francisco Bay from San Francisco, and uh, they were gone by 1855. We have no visual record of them. Oh, we only wow. have the record of their stumps. So they were fed into the maw of San Francisco, and then they began plundering the fish, the whales, of course, the gold, mercury, uh, which was down near San Jose. Um, but all of that cash and credit was centered in San Francisco. And the people who became lastingly rich uh, were those not who made money in the gold rush, but who got in on the ground floor and got the land and converted it into real estate. They became lastingly, dynastically rich. Some of those families are still around, living in Pacific Heights and on Knob Hill, the most desirable places in San Francisco. Yeah, I love Pacific Heights. Um I want to speak with you about um, those families specifically, and I have a question lined up to do that. But before I go there, you mentioned performing arts, uh, and I want to go on a tangent from that and ask you this: um, how did how did San Francisco become known as a liberal city? What's the what are the roots of that? Is it because of support of entry or what? Well, I think that has a lot to do with it, um, that it is a port city like Hamburg, for example, Venice, and and port cities generally are places where anything goes. You've got a yeah. lot of um, horny single men, um, <laughs> and, you know, uh, so services are provided for them. Yeah. And they like to get to know each other as well, too. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's that. And then it was right... From the beginning, because it also, and this has been largely forgotten, it was a manufacturing town. It isn't anymore, but it was in the 19th century. Ironworks, for example. Um, and so it was a strong union town. And although the unions tended to be quite racist, at the same point, uh, they were quite progressive. And so uh, San Francisco is a strong union town, whereas Los Angeles is not. Los Angeles tends to be, because of the Los Angeles time, uh, an open shop town. So you have that combination. Although, really, uh, you know, its ruling class was Republican. That San Francisco's changed. ruling class was Republican? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. I'm all they ears. Go ahead. Yeah, wow. no, no, no. I mean, San Francisco was a moderately Republican town up until the 60s and the 70s. When you started getting this influx of 
hippies and gays and other, and they, the politics then changes drastically and becomes what people now think of San Francisco as being the modern, I mean, the progressive city that it is today. But that's relatively recent. Oh, wow. I did not know that. Um, I want to just get uh, clarify something. The gold rush uh, in San Francisco uh, happened in the late 1840s. The would-be discovery of gold is 1848. Um, okay. Marshall discovery. Actually, the United States already knew there was gold and much else in California at least six years before that. It's probably why the Mexican-American War was fought in order to acquire California and much else besides. But yes, there was uh, the, the discovery of gold was announced in late 1848, and the gold rush followed in the following years. And, the, um, and so... And and the gold was not – I'm sorry, go, go ahead, ahead, please. No, um, tens of thousands of people, mostly men, poured into California in order to get the gold. In the process, they raised the value of the land on that the tip of that peninsula, the Golden Gate, that became San Francisco. And the gold, the gold itself was not in San Francisco. San Francisco became, became like the site for – servicing the gold that was in the sierras am i uh, recounting this story correctly yes the sierra nevada is a mountain range about 400 miles long um that is about oh 150 miles to the east of san francisco mm -hmm. but it's reachable by the rivers um from san francisco that extend into the central valley from there they could get off the river boats and go up into the sierra looking for gold and they were looking for placer gold uh, that was gold that was in the streams. There was a lot of it, but there were also so many men uh, rooting for it like hogs, as one of the observers said, <laughs> that by 1855, it looked like it was running out. And that's when San Francisco has its first crash. Oh, wow. Because it looked like the gold was running out. It wasn't. You just had to push technology to uh get the gold that wasn't easily available in the riverbeds uh you had to work harder so to speak dig deeper um you certainly did let's take a break here we'll be right back to talk about san francisco's highs and lows <laughs> 